you know, you're going to see like the first minute of this video and you're going to be like, Meryl, where are you going with this? But I swear I'm going somewhere metal detecting related. And I swear that the lesson will be valuable and you will profit off of it. The lesson is in social psychology. And we're going to take the most basic example. We're going to take going to the bathroom. Whether you know it or not, society has unwritten rules. So if somebody is using the center urinal, if they're peeing right there, can you tell me before I answer you, which two urinals are most likely not going to be used and which two are? Now, believe it or not, there is a lot of scientific literature on this. And yes, I have read some of it. According to this literature, at least in Western culture, spacing is a unwritten rule in bathrooms. And psychologists have gone as far as to count or quantify this phenomenon by seeing where people choose to use the urinals if there's someone else present. Now, the concept of spacing goes out the window if the bathroom is packed. But uh, for the most part, if you got just a small number of people in the bathroom, you will see spacing. Same rules apply on trains. If, if you're the only person sitting in a train car, chances are 99 out of 100 times, if you're the person who comes into the train car, they're not going to sit right next to you. They're going to give you your space. They're going to want their own space. But how does this apply to metal detecting? Well, the answers will be revealed over the course of this video. Well, my phone just beeped, and we have an emergency curfew in effect at 8 p.m. tonight, so I guess I'm gonna detect until 7.59. So my buddy Jonathan from the detecting zone hit it big this morning. He got a capped bust uh, half dollar today. Uh, 18.26, I believe it was. You better believe that makes me hungry to go out and to detect. So I'm headed to Brooklyn and I, I need some silver. Gotta fill that box. You know, originally at the beginning of the year, my goal was to detect in five different states. But being that, uh, you know, COVID is preventing a lot of traveling, what I wanna do is I wanna hit every park on the permit in New York City. And shoot, man, I mean, if you wanna invite me to your backyard, I'll do that too. It is good to be alive with a metal detector in hand. You know, not everybody feels that way. Uh, we love detecting those who detect, but I, I know it, every kid grows up wanting to uncover a treasure at some point in their life. We're the adults that actually do that. But you know what stops people? Social psychology. That's what the fear of looking like a dork with a detector in your hand in public. And even if you are a hardcore detectorist, I think there are parts of parks or beaches that you stop from going to. Good signal north of 30 at times. Sounds very big. Not sure if it's a coin. Well, let's see what it is. It was actually a uh, surface target that I missed. How about that? Another nice signal that flashes north of 30. Look at this. It sounds long though. Well, it was two signals in a row, a quarter and a bottle cap. And there was a third signal there too. This was just a, looks like 1964 penny, 1968. Okay, one, just got a dime. Two, we're gonna put into practice today the concept of social psychology silver. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that detectorists, we like our space when we detect. And there are areas on the edge of the park where it is easy to see uh, the person swinging the detector. And I know when I was early in my detecting career, I wanted no part of that. I wanted to be left alone. Now it's not as much of a big deal. Um, so we're going to check the edges of the park and I'm coming off of a live stream yesterday where I pulled six silvers from this park. So let's see how we do. Now there's more to it than just that. So search the edges of the park and get silver. 
Uh, for instance, it's where people put stuff down. I think when people put their coat down, when people uh, you know, put their bags down, especially, stuff can fall out. And this was true years ago. Also, could it be that years ago, a different part of the park was used than it is today? Yeah, like what were, you, you got to think in terms of volume. But what I'm trying to say to you today is that I, I've observed the habits of detectorists, uh, especially in Prospect Park in Brooklyn. And it always seems that detectorists are in the middle of the field. Now, I, I don't have the science that, uh, yeah, such as the urinal stalls that a scientist has actually observed and done this. This is by my own mental judgment and physical observation. But very few people go in the areas where there are uh, a lot of people and they the areas on the edges of the road, on the edges of the park, where they can easily be seen. And you have to think in terms of supply and demand. You know, if there are a lot of detectorists smack in the middle of the park, and there are areas that are underlooked, you will get more if those areas were used in the past. 1960s penny. Um, the date can sometimes be a clue. It doesn't mean that it was dropped that year. But if you see a volume, welcome back, Jeff is here. If you see a volume of those pennies, if you see a volume of uh, targets, you know, with dates in the same range, it's a good guess that uh, these have been in the ground for a while. You could also see by the uh, patina. Egad, it is a penny made of wheat. These are signs, you know, if you see a bunch of them together, uh, and I sure did yesterday in the live stream, it's a sign that it is a spot that has some age and we're hoping for silver or er, it's a lock it's a quarter this would be a silver signal let's get it well I've been wrong before this is a memorial signal I see what happened something else in that hole Hopefully something more silvery. This was a serious meh level event. Another wheat scent. And I'm thinking if there's wheat scents here, there's probably Indian heads here too. Scratchy, but let's do it. Meh. Another wheat scent. Wheat scents. Every single one of them was minted in the silver era, which is before 1964, and in the case of wheat scents, uh, 1958 back to uh, 1909. But uh, anywho, it is a great harbinger for possible success. Now, anybody can get a wheat scent in change uh, these days, and I suppose in 2020, you can drop a wheat scent. But if you see a lot of wheat scents in one area, keep hunting it. Look for those clues. Infer, infer. Indian head penny. Breaking news. If you find an Indian head penny, you know to keep looking at that ground. Keep uh, searching for more. I think there's something else in here, too, because this rung up uh, really strange. It's usually 17. And you hear that's higher. So we're going to have to look at a date. It doesn't look like one of the uh, fatter ones but uh, we got an Indian head. So although I do find silver in this video, spoiler alert, uh, the next find is my favorite of the day. And we're at a park called Fort Greene Park. And uh, Jeff is gonna tell you a little bit about the history of Fort Greene Park. One of the uh, locations where the uh, Continental Army, I would guess you'd call it? Correct. Made a, made a good stand against the uh, British. Uh, not too sure how we fared, but that monument right there has got the remains buried underneath of the prisoners that from the, that died on the uh, British ships. Correct. Yeah, and I didn't uh, say that what it was a musket yet. Ball. Musket ball. So a historic one. That is definitely a musket ball. Yeah, man. That is awesome. Considering the historic location of the park uh, and uh, what transpired there, I would say it's safe to assume that that's a Revolutionary War musket ball, the real thing. So very thrilled about that. And to reinforce my point from before, found on the outskirts of the park right by the street. Yeah, so That's Jeff and I just uh, uh, tried the Indian head. I've never had an Indian head. 
ring up like that. It's always been 1718. It's ringing up like a zinkin. It's ringing up like a zinkin. Well said. Yeah. I wonder how many of those we ignored here on 21. Probably a lot. Uh, not sure. Yeah, it's modern. Not okay. modern. That's old, but. Yeah, another bullet. Wow. That's so cool. You're in the bullet zone. Yeah, man. I wonder. Do you think this would. Listen, experts on YouTube, you're smarter than me. I don't know bullets. Is this something that could have been revolutionary era? I know the musket ball was. Now you've seen me detect with a lot of different people and you learn a lot from doing that. You learned a lot from observation, from talking to them, but sometimes we could get into old habits and that is what, uh, that's why I'm putting this video out. I want to break your habits. I want you to try something new and maybe get a score from doing that. Because, again, going back to social psychology, when we detect with friends, we tend to think of group consensus. Take a look at this. This might be a mind blow for anybody who has never heard of the Ash Conformity Experiment. Watch this, and yes, it applies to metal detecting. But an experiment is not a public opinion poll. It examines behavior under the pressure of social forces, as the experiment of Solomon Ash reveals. The experiment you'll be taking part in today involves the perception of lengths of lines. As you can see here, I have a number of cards, and on each card there are several lines. Your task is a very simple one. You're to look at the line on the left and determine which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. All right, we'll proceed in this order. You'll give your answer. Only one of the people in the group is a real subject, the fifth person with the white t-shirt. The others are confederates of the experimenter and have been told to give wrong answers on some of the trials. The experiment begins uneventfully as subjects give their judgments. Two, 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 two. three, 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 three. But on the third trial, something happens. Two. 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 Uh, two. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence. One. Ash found subjects went along with the group on 37% of the critical trials. One. But he found through interviews One. that they went along with the group for different reasons. One. One. They must be right. There are four of them and one of me. Uh, one. This subject's yielding is based on a distortion of his judgment. He genuinely believes that the group is correct. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Well, doggone it, I'm tough and I do what I want. This doesn't apply to me. What are, what are you talking about? You, you Are you crazy? But the thing is, all humans are programmed this way and we get into habits. Meh. Thomas, Jeff, what are you doing here? Uh, I mean, I know you were, you know, early American history, but your coin wasn't, come on, man. So Thomas Jefferson might have heard me. I got a 28, 27, 28 signal right in here that he was masking. And I wonder if it could be Skilver. It is not Skilver, but it is a wheat scent. I can't even act, you know, excited. I mean, usually they're great, but not right now. I'll be happy, Merrill. 19, 19 something, 1950 something. Well, we got another chance. This is even worse. It's. Franklin Delano, I was going to call him Teddy Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Oh, we got another shot at this really complex hole. All right, let's dig. And it goes from bad to worse. It's a zinkin. Nah. Zincon is slang for zinc-covered Lincoln scent. Basically, after 1982, any coin, any penny that uh, that is uh, minted has a shell of copper and uh, has a zinc inside. So 
if you, if you see this beat up coin that uh, rings up 1920 on the equinox you might want to think twice about where you're swinging but everything is a clue everything is a inference and don't let psychology get in the way obviously don't go swinging on people's feet i'm not telling you to do that but uh, i'm telling you like if, if you smile if you there's a way that you could make yourself more comfortable and it's by repetitions in that environment getting to it and interacting with people in that environment without invading their space all right look at this this is perfect 27 30 perfect um let's dig my detector is getting low on battery because i'm stupid or wheat sense okay ready to break my heart again here we go Thomas Jefferson. So poetic. I'm looking for silver. I find the frickin' silver bullet. Okay, it sure as heck doesn't look like it, but I think I found a war nickel. Now take a look first. See the P here? There's a P, but most importantly, look at how it rung up. So this is actually a silver nickel. 1944. It is a war nickel silver number one of the day. Hagen dies. Has been unlocked. It's another wheat sack. What the fluff and muffin is this? It's an old circuit board. Hmm. Hmm. Meh. This silver rim gets me every time. That's a quarter. It's, it's another weedy. So much wheat I could make spaghetti. Another basin signal. Another piece of wheat. Ginormous piece of iron. Wonder if this is colonial iron. We will never know. Okay, right over here, I removed a penny. Look at what's happening over here. We got a pretty deep signal. Oh my god, it's another weedy. Old Pulith Tabith. It's a wheat scent. Unbelievable. Another weedy. Alright, it's drop the mic time. Social psychology silver. Notice I am looking by sidewalks, by the street, in an area in plain visibility. I think that there's a lot of people that avoid that and they go back to their corner. Don't be one of them. Guess what's not a drop the mic signal? A wheat scent. Finally. Hagen dies. Has been unlocked. Jeez. I mean, it is technically two today, but that, that other one was so, you know, it, it didn't look, it, it is, but it didn't look. It, this is the real thing. All right, we need more, actually. Let's not drop the mic. Let's, let's try a little more. Again, I'm calling this video Social Psychology Silver, but look at where I'm looking. Right on the path. Let's play a game that I've used in the classroom for many, many years. It's called Over Reinforce the Point. All right, so let's take a look at an aerial view of Prospect Park. Now, everybody and their mother hits this field with the metal detector right here. I've seen so many people stand in the middle of the field. Does it produce? Sure. Same thing with down here, same thing with down here. And basically, you know, you don't really see people going in areas of the trees. Part of that could be because they don't have sniper coils. Um, part of it could be that it is closer to where people are sitting. And... You know, again, I'm not telling you to get in people's business, but 
if you have a volume of detectorists in one area, don't go through old habits. Look for new ones. And the areas that get ignored, it's the areas by the street. It's the areas that other detectorists don't look. And I realize that you have more of a volume of activity, you know, in the central areas. You have people putting stuff down, but you might be overlooking an area that people have not searched. I think a lot of other people would avoid a spot like this. Unbelievable, another wheat scent. Uh, another wheat scent. Battery is blinking. You sir pounded this section. Uh, yeah. Uh, another wheat scent. <laughs> my battery's blinking now, so it's almost time. Quarter. This is my last chance for silver. Ah. There we go. That's 1937. Hagen does. Has been unlocked. These quarters, I tell you, they don't look like silver, but this is, uh, this is, this is silver. And this was next to it. Now let's see if I can squeeze out one more. It's still going, so I'm still going. Another wheat scent. Well, that's good. That was a good day. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to do a wrap up right now. So stay tuned. Look at this. Look at this craziness. <laughs> Here's one. All you. Thank you. It's good luck. I'm gonna hold on to this. I Here's need it. Here is two. Hang on to that. We'll Here's put those in the wrap up. More coming. Oh my God, I'm running. Still Thank filming. You. Here's three. More coming. Weird, that work rang up like a 25. Here's 24. four. Poor Jeff. He's like, can we get out of here, please? No, no. <laughs> uh, he, Here's five. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is what I do, man. Listen, I've, I've, I've always... I take pictures of like animals and nature, so I'm right there with you. Here we go. Here's six. All right. Now I'm putting them in my mouth. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right. I think that's it. Oh no. Here's seven. Here's seven. I'm telling you, I'm going to set a YouTube record someday. For uh, Floyd's Clover? I think I have the YouTube record. I did like 40 in a... Here we go. Here's another one. Here's eight. <laughs> Number eight. You definitely eight. got a hunt as a spot now. Yeah, man. Got it. And this one, it's tiny, but it does have a fourth leaf on it. So that would uh, classify that? as a four leaf clover. Correct. All right, man. Chill your ADHD. Let's go. <laughs> About to make it rain four leaf clovers. <laughs> make it rain. <laughs> Now the question in my mind is how many, how many um, wheat scents I got. <laughs> so, gonna count that. All right, let's, another let's get this party started. All right, these are all wheaties, okay? So we got <laughs> one, two, three, quattro, five, six, seven, ocho, Nine, ten, once, doce, trece, fourteen, a catorce, catorce. I know, I know. <laughs> so, fourteen Wheaties that's cray. Why am I holding on to this? What is it? It looks uh, very phallic. It looks very, <laughs> yeah, kind of does. My, minus the, uh, yeah, well, it depends. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not gonna conceive children. <laughs> no, so we got <laughs> find that poor robot. I'm sure he's very upset. <laughs> yeah, so we got one, two, three pieces of silver. I didn't see dates yet. This is 1937, I think. Nice, this is 19. 41 and this is a 1944 i think my favorite find of the day was musket. the musket ball that's, that's pretty sweet and this you know i'm curious it was found right by the musket ball is it uh you know it, it, it was it something that could have been used at the uh american revolution last thing for me is the uh, indian head penny which i know you can't see here but Hopefully, I'm, oh, bless you. Thank you. Sorry. I'm considerate in my video, and I show a good close-up, and I think I will. <laughs> and this is Jeff's haul for the day. He got the two Mercs. 
he got five Wheaties, and he got lots of clad that he's gonna take to, what's your casino you said? Foxwoods. Fo he's taking it to Foxwoods, there you go. That could turn into a jackpot, man. Fun day. All right, let's put our new friends in with our old friends. And let's deposit our wheat cents. Go live in overcrowded conditions. Now I'm starting to organize my uh, Indian head collection. So go live with your friends. And musket balls. Let's see. I think this is the musket ball. Yep. There's some other musket balls in here. So go live with your friends. Thump. Yeah, man. Social psychology silver. Learn to carry your detector in public. Nothing wrong with it. And you just tell people you're a pole vaulter or something, you know? With a very short pole. So that's a day. Thanks for watching. Uh, we got a problem. There's a bird on my car. Hey, buddy. Thankfully, he flew away. I wouldn't have known what to do. Yeah, if he was. Yeah, I couldn't leave him on the ground. So. Happy ending there. The moral of the over reinforcement of this story were the mistakes that I made for the first years that I metal detected. It really took me a long time to get comfortable around people with a metal detector. Now I absolutely dork out. Part of it is going with other people, but not totally being steered. You know, you, you have to look at the data. In other words, if you're in an area that has a lot of wheat scents, if you're pulling up older items, yeah, you stay there. Uh, but, you know, don't just blindly go, you know, with somebody. Look at the data. Uh, if you're on a beach, look at where you have been digging and go down the beach on that line. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. Anywho, um, explore. That's the thing. Explore. Don't be scared to get in those spaces that, uh, you know, maybe other detector detectorists have not looked because uh, social psychology prevents them from doing it. Anyway, thank you for watching.